Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to High Tinker Mecha Talk in the Battle of Dazara Law. So this awesome fight is likely to be your real first test in the instance, as its mechanics are pretty unforgiving and you need to rely quite a bit on raid communication. Let's jump in with the basics. So tanks, you need to keep an eye on the boss's Electroshock Strike stacks. Each melee hit the boss does deals an additional amount of nature damage, and this additional damage stacks if he hits the same target, so you want to taunt to reset it, roughly around the 8 stack mark. For everyone to watch out for is the Buster Cannon. This projectile is shot out at the location of a random player after a cast. If you're hit, it deals massive damage, followed by a very nasty dot. If healers aren't quick to top you, you'll definitely die shortly after getting hit. Keep an eye on the boss throughout the fight and be ready to dodge it whenever it's cast. Also to watch out for is Blast Off. The boss will create two targeting zones, one around him and one on a random ranged player. After the cast, he'll deal a large amount of damage to players within 10 yards of him and an even larger amount of damage to anyone within the ranged targeting circle. This also does deals a moderate amount of flat raid-wide damage. Just move from both targeting circles and healers top up the damage. We assigned a cooldown for each cast. Also to make sure you track is the Gigavolt Charge debuffs. This debuff is applied to 3 random players and it deals light ticking damage for 15 seconds. When it expires, it applies a stronger debuff to all players within line of sight. If all 3 players let the debuff expires within line of sight of the raid, you'll very quickly wipe to the raid damage of the dot. Fortunately, there are multiple rock piles within the corners of the room. You want to run behind these with the debuff before it times out to make it safe. Whilst each player should really look to go behind their own rock pile, it is worth mentioning that rock piles towards the docks have multiple formations to hide behind, so if two people do go to the same side, you should still be able to only get hit by your own debuff. Now on Heroic, throughout the fight, Mechatork will cast Wormhole Generator on a random player. After the cast has ended, this teleports the entire raid to that player. This can overlap with the Gigavolt debuffs, giving players less time to move out of line of sight. Just make a rule of always going to the middle of the room if you're targeted by the generator, so players of the debuff still have plenty of time to get behind any of the rocks. Now the last thing to mention in this phase, and probably the most important thing about the entire fight, is the spark bots. Throughout the fight, the boss will call these bots in, and when they land, they'll fixate a random player and slowly move towards them, frequently casting spark pulse on their way, which deals damage and stuns anyone within 8 yards. This also deals a small amount of unavoidable damage to random players in the raid. Now these bots can be crowd controlled in most ways, but knockbacks into roots is the best. They do however slowly gain a movement speed and haste increase which eventually turns into a buff which significantly reduces the duration of crowd control. So you need to kill these bots before they get to that stage, but they take 99% less damage from spells and attacks. Fortunately the boss does help you out with this after he has spawned 3 spark bots by casting world enlarger. This will shrink 3 random players in the raid. Whilst you're all shrunk down, you deal 99% less damage, and you can be trampled by normal size raid members. If a player runs over the top of you, you'll be stunned for a second and take a burst of physical damage, so people really need to watch out for these little guys. As a shrunk player, you can directly interact with the robots and enter them as a vehicle. Inside, you'll gain 5 buttons. You need to enter a 3 button code to access a self-destruct button, and this needs to be done within 45 seconds. The only issue here is, is that you don't know what your code is. Only other shrunk players in other robots know what your code is, as it is displayed one button at a time above your head. So all three players need to communicate to let each other know what their code is all at the same time. There is a few ways that this can be done, notably many weak horrors and add-ons have been developed enabling you to send whispers immediately to each player inside a robot to let them know what their code is, but at this current moment in time we do not recommend it. In fact some of the developers of these weak horrors agree and say that using comms is better, but we do understand that it's not going to be the case for every guild, hence why we're mentioning it. However we do not have any experience with these weak horrors or add-ons so we're just simply going to explain how we did it. We place raid icons on the robots as they spawn. The moment three players are shrunk, we assign one of them to be the leader of the group. It is that player's job to call out the code for the other two players. Once he's called for both of them, he will then ask for his own code and one of them will respond. This will be repeated until it's done three times and the self-destruct button can be hit. So let's use this footage as an example. So the leader is telling the square robot, you are yellow cross robot you are also yellow and then he'll be asking what his own is once he knows what his is he'll push that button and then the cycle will repeat square robot you are red cross robot you are purple and then asking again what his robot is he'll push that button last time square robot you are purple cross robot you are yellow 
and asking for a final time what his own is, at which point everyone can hit their self-destruct button and continue the fight as normal. You need to do this throughout the entire fight to keep these bots under control, before they do raid damage too frequently and healers fall behind, as well as CC becoming useless on them. Now if you press the wrong button or take longer than 45 seconds, you will be stunned and removed from the robot and get a really nasty 12 second dot. That without immense spot healing will kill you very quickly, which on top of not getting the robot to even self-destruct is a really really bad thing to do. As one last tip to do with these robots, just take your time. You have 45 seconds to give each other three bits of information. Just take it chill and you'll be fine. Once you've managed to get the hang of that, you will get the boss to 40% health and you'll enter phase two. At this point, he'll jump into the air and take 99% less damage. He'll now begin to spawn exploding sheep around the room. They stay dormant for a couple of seconds and then explode, dealing massive damage to anyone nearby and then they'll shoot fire in all directions. Getting hit by one of these fires applies a really nasty stacking dot, so it's really important that you avoid them. Throughout the phase, you'll still continue to apply the Gigavolt debuffs to random people, you need to deal with them the exact same way. He'll also apply Shrunk to far more players, so you need to be careful of trampling your small friends. This is made worse when Wormhole Generator is cast. If you all immediately move, the Shrunk players will be crushed instantly. We make a rule of letting the small people move first, wait a second or two, and then the big guys can move. Once you manage to survive through that, the boss will return and phase 1 will begin again. However, the boss is now buffed with hyperdrive. This increases his attack speed by 30% and he'll begin to do unavoidable raid damage periodically. To add, he will now spawn the sheep during this phase, so you're going to have to continue to avoid them. The worst thing about this final phase is that instead of spawning one robot at a time, he will now begin to spawn two robots at a time. And the thing is, he doesn't shrink six players, he will still only shrink three. This means that this final part of the encounter is a complete race to the end. You've just got to nuke the boss down before your healers fall too far behind from all the raid damage coming in from the robots. Whilst the shrunk players that you do have do try and alleviate some of the raid damage by destroying whatever robots they can. But that's the encounter. Good luck in a pug. So thank you very much for watching guys. If you do want a written counterpart for this guide that has loads of useful information and tooltips that you can refer to during your raid, then do go and check out our written work over on Wowhead. A link for that can be found in the description below. If you did enjoy this guide, then please do throw a like on it. It helps us out a lot. And of course, thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Catch you later.